Okay, so we have, uh, hopefully by now, if you've been following along with these videos, we have the rear end housing aligned in the car. We have it uh, square with the rear cross member and centered between the four link brackets. So this, this part is done. We also should have the pinion angle set. We uh, covered that in a previous video. And so once we have that uh, portion of the housing done, we've, uh, we've obviously already picked our four link settings. And we'll go into detail on four link stuff later. But um, the next uh, topic that we should cover would be preload. And um, we get questions all the time about preload. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about it, and there's a lot of uh, inaccurate information. It's it's very simple, and it's uh, it's easy to remember. So preload is basically the adjustment of one of the of the four four link bars to distribute weight to one rear tire or the other. So by adding preload to a four link system, you're basically kind of putting a little load on the housing on one of the links to take weight off of one tire and wheel combination and apply it to the other. So if you had this car sitting on scales on tires on top of digital scales and you were turning this bar, you would see the weight change. And preload adjustment is just one of the many settings that are used in the four link assembly to, to help the car work properly. So without getting into a lot of complicated detail, um, there are two positions for preload and one for neutral. So neutral would be no load. So this, this if you, somebody says, well, I'm running the car neutral, there's no load. So there, I can, and this rear end is hanging. So we, we adjust the uh, preload with the rear end hanging, number one, because it's easy to do with the tire and wheel off of it. So the, the car's up on jacks, the uh, tire and wheel is off of it, and it's easy to get to, it's easy to jam this stuff up. You can, as long as you know where your setting is from zero hanging, you can make adjustments to the car based on what it needs. So if the car's going left, it needs some negative preload. If it's going right, it needs some positive preload. So. A lot of guys will get in, caught up in this whole thing that it's got to be setting on scales and you have to reach through here and adjust it and it's just a bunch of crap that doesn't make any sense at all. So this is easy right here. So we're, we've got the body on, we've got the tires and wheels off both sides. We want to have them on both sides because you, just taking it off one side you still have that weight of that wheel and tire hanging on the other side and it gives you a, a misconception of exactly where neutral is. So we've got the housing's hanging on the shocks, it's lined up square. We've got the jam nuts broken loose and we're ready to put preload in. Now if you're starting from scratch, uh, haven't run the car yet, everything's brand new, you can choose to start it at neutral or if it's got some big, if it's got big power, put some negative in it because it's probably going to need some. Um, so power and if you got power and you got a good, you know, good sized tire on the back of the car, it's going to try to drive the car to the left, which means that it's it's going to drive, it's going to it's going to apply more traction to the right rear tire, which pushes the car to the left. So when you apply negative to this, and the amount of preload is measured in flats, and flats are just these six-sided flats of this um, adjustment tube adapter up here. So um, you have neutral is right there, so one flat would be just taking this flat and going to the next flat. So that's one flat. So from neutral, if you do um, negative, you're gonna pull it towards you. Ne uh, negative preload makes the bar longer. It pushes these rod ends apart. Positive preload pulls them together. So if the guy says, oh, I got a half a flat of negative in it, he's right here, and he's just got that much right there. Half a flat would be from a flat to a point. So um, one flat would be one full flat from one to the other, just exactly in the same spot. So if we're going to put a little negative in here, we're going to find neutral, and then we're just going to go to the tight side of neutral, and then we're just going to add that flat, and then we're going to lock these down. Now this chassis would have one flat of negative preload in it. So we always choose to use um, 
the upper right hand bar which is pretty common uh, this uh, that that's pretty common across any of the of the builders it's just convenient to always use this side and so if the car's going left and it needs preload adjustment um, our limit is no more than two flats um, we, we don't want to put any more than two in it there's other adjustments we can do and we're going to cover that a little bit later in another video but for right now we're just discussing preload on this upper bar so two flats is our maximum so we'll start this out with uh, based on the engine combination we'll start it out with uh, one flat of negative and uh, and then adjust from there if this car still goes to the left you can give it a little more negative um, if it's going to the right you can give it a touch of positive when the uh, when when this when a chassis is brand new, new rod ends, new four link bars, all that stuff, it takes a little bit uh, of time, it takes a couple runs for all this stuff to kind of settle down because you've got fresh threads on everything and, and it's going to move around. So it's not uncommon for the preload to change a little bit after three, four, five runs on a brand new setup. So uh, preload is also a good indicator of something changing. So for instance, if you always run one flat negative in the car and you're doing your normal service in between races and you check the preload and all of a sudden now all the preload's gone. So it's neutral, it's still jammed, but you always run one flat negative. Well, that means something is moving around in the car. Um, could be a hole stretching out in the four link bracket, it could be something breaking in the chassis, but something has changed to make that uh, preload go away. So you should be aware of that and look around and see if there are any cracks or any uh, bolts loose or any uh, holes that it might be getting elongated. But you should, after a car has been worked in and, and it has a good set on preload, it shouldn't change. It, it should stay the same. So if you do see that go away or you normally run it neutral and now it has some preload in it, look around and see what's changing to make that happen because it could be something on this side of the car, it could be something on that side, could be something up in the front of the four link, could be a housing bending, flexing, uh, lots of different things could cause that to happen, but it's an indicator that something's changing so you should look around. So just to kind of retouch, uh, unjam this, uh, all, all three other bars are jammed up, they're locked down, this is the only bar that's loose, and we're going to find neutral here, which means it's going to click so there's no load on the rod ends. And then uh, we're going to either run it at neutral or if we want to put some negative in it, we're going to make that bar longer. So negative would be pulling this to me and making it longer. And I don't know if you can see it in the video, but so if the, if, if the car's going left and you want it to go back to the right, you want that wheel entire combination to drive harder on that side so if I if I just sit here and crank on this you can actually see the housing twisting up this side's picking up that side's pushing down so it's taking load off of this side and putting load on that side which is going to drive the car back to the center of the racetrack so I just manually cranked about half a turn in this thing but um, that's a real good indicator if you forget which way negative and positive is just look at the housing and see what it does so if the car's going left this right rear tire has more traction, has more weight on it than the left rear tire. So to get away from that, just crank on this bar and, and make it change and do it a flat at a time. So it's real easy to remember. If you can't remember that negative pushes the car back to the right, just give it a turn here and watch the housing and see what it does and, and understand, stand behind the car and look at it from in your head and say, okay, I want the car to go to the right it's going to the left I want it to go to the right so I need more traction on the left rear tire so by doing that putting negative in it will give you that effect and make the car go straight so uh, that's the uh, preload 101 um, it's very simple it's easy to remember if you forget just crank on it see which way it moves make sure you remember to jam it up when you're done and uh, also when you do jam, when you jam it up, make sure that the rod ends aren't clocked off. So make sure that they're both the same way. So as they lean over, don't have one twisted one way and one the other so, the, so that they're bound up in there. You still want the uh, rim to move freely through its travel. So make sure that both rod ends 
are twisted the same way so that they can be back on center. So don't have one twisted all the way one way and one the other way when you jam it up. That just locks the bar up in there. So that's all I have for preload. Uh, check back in and uh, watch some of the other videos.